Hey there, good Sunday morning and welcome to Weekend Recharge. I'm Paul Goodlow. And I'm Lynette Charles. America's weekend depends on the weather. And let's just get the elephant out of the room. <laughs> Right. right now, let's talk about it. Uh, Halloween's coming up. Is it? Okay, that's it. My horns <laughs> took an L last <laughs> night. But I'm ride or die, baby. Okay. Win or lose. Okay. I'm always rep. I'm in mourning in the black, but I'm all, I bleed. Georgia I bleed did. bleed long horns. Georgia did well last is night. That, is that what we're doing? Oh, no, I just have one red today. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Was it 30-15 score? Yes. Okay. Oh. All right, we can move on to weather now since we got that out of the way. <laughs> Take it away, my friend. All right. <laughs> uh, as we continue through the rest of today. So I'm going to start you out around the southeast where we're looking spectacular in terms of these temperatures and the sky. Lots of sunshine. You just heard uh, Paul talking about Nashville. Lots of sunshine there. Down off towards the south around Jacksonville, uh, Tampa. Still going to be on the drier side. Again, we're still watching for that recovery. Things looking good there in terms of the weather. As we head towards your tomorrow, still more of the same. And I say all this to, to say that, uh, you know, we're talking about the king tides and you see all sunshine here, right? Yes, you can still have uh, these tides and these coastal flood advisories uh, that will affect the coast and still be under a lot of sunshine. And this is exactly what we're seeing. So we do have coastal flood advisories from Wilmington all the way down off towards uh, West Palm Beach and even Miami as well. So when we talk about the king tides, we're talking about uh, the the alignment of the earth, moon, and the sun. And also this often occurs between six to eight times a year. So this is what we have. We do have that pull and we're gonna to continue to watch the potential uh, as we go through time with those winds continuing to really uh, move in as we do have that uh, counterclockwise flow, that more onshore flow as we go through the rest of today. Look at those winds that will continue to hammer around Daytona Beach, around Melbourne as well. So we're looking at the east coast of Florida, but also we'll see those winds as we go through the west coast too. So across the peninsula, as we move through your rest of today, as we head into your Monday as well, and even as we head into your Tuesday and Wednesday, we're still going to be quite breezy, but at least we will be dry in some of those recovery areas. Now look at some of the tide cycles here. We'll look at Jacksonville, and we can see the high tide will be at 108 this afternoon, and then again, we'll see it early Monday morning around 130. We head over towards Charleston. We see that high tide at 1051 this morning, and then the next high tide comes in this evening at 1116 and then our last stop again we're going to continue to watch uh, what's going to be going on as we go through the next several days because we do have uh, this um, pull that will be out and about for us. Now as Milton headed to a Florida landfall people prepared to survive a hurricane but instead they faced a deadly tornado. Here's what it was like in their own words go through the flooded ro roadways. Uh, you don't even know what's in that water. You don't know if the road's still there. I could go on and on. Let's talk about what's going on on the maps right now. So we can see uh, the radar still quite lit up, but look at the temperatures though. So look at Telluride where we're looking at cold enough conditions to see some snow and in the higher elevations is exactly what we're seeing. But then we head to places like Albuquerque where it's almost 60 degrees there. Roswell, you're at 63 degrees. Uh, it is um, a very uh, rough dynamic that we're dealing with. Again, the mountain snow and we have the rain the thunderstorms here. Uh, with that said, we actually could get some strong and severe thunderstorms as we go in through the rest of today as well. Over the past few hours, we have been really raining cats and dogs here. Look at or the yellow area. That is about three to five inches of rainfall that's fallen over the past 12 hours. And this is why we've been dealing with those flash flood emergencies there. Seven people were rescued from a vehicle that was swept away by the water. And you heard me talk about the potential for some strong and severe thunderstorms for today. Well, there you go. You can see all the areas there shaded in the red coloring that even moves over into the Texas Panhandle as well. Look at what's going on with what we could see for today. So yeah, damaging gusty wind, but we could also see a few um, tornadic winds as well. So we do have that tornado threat. Torcons of two and three. Of course, we're dealing with the lower end scale, but again, it's not the no end scale. So that possibility is there. We continue to time this out as we go through the rest of this afternoon and we start to see those cells developing. You can actually see just to uh, the west of Clovis, a little bit of that white. Yeah, we could see some hail uh, trying to develop with these severe thunderstorms. This will continue to push on off towards the north and east. Again, moving through the Texas Panhandle, Amarillo early overnight into your Monday morning and be because of that, tomorrow morning we could still be dealing with some strong and severe thunderstorms um, from Hayes all the way down off towards Elk City. Paul.
at. I've been to Seattle one time and it's absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to go back. But when we talk about atmospheric rivers, you hear us say that a lot, but you also hear us say AR. So that's what's short for atmospheric rivers. They're concentrated plume of water vapor in the atmosphere and they can be a thousand miles over a thousand miles long. And it's just like a hose that's being sprayed uh, just right across the Pacific Northwest. And you can see all that moisture there in the green and that hose at Seattle. And we're going to continue uh, to bring in that moisture, bring in plenty of rain as we look right now we can see it around forks that temperature coming in at 54 and this is just going to continue to uh, grow as we go through the next several days so let's go ahead and put this into motion now of course we're going to be seeing that rain but we're also going to be dealing with a little bit of mountain snow coming in too so as we go into this afternoon we're going to continue to watch uh, more of the green extend over towards seattle down off towards portland north bend you're going to be getting in on this action too and as we go into your monday we'll see more green moving inland farther inland but again we're also watch for some mountain snow across the area too. So as we go in through the evening time frame, uh, Monday afternoon, Seattle, Portland, getting another round of some rain and some snow coming in again in the higher elevations. We'll see that snow and this will linger right in through your Monday evening. This is what we have still to come. So in terms of that rainfall, I uh, will see pockets of about one to two inches of rain, but uh, most of us will see about up to an inch of rain coming in here. So with that rain that we will be seeing, we do have the potential for some flash flooding and it will be in these areas. It will be possible around Bellingham, around Trinity, around Forks. Remember, Forks is a place that we're dealing with that rain coming in already. Paul? It is autumn, right, right? We are going to talk about all the snow that we have been seeing over the past three days out west here, and most of it we picked up around the Wasatch and also uh, back off towards the Rockies. Let's go ahead and zoom in because where you're seeing some of the pinks and especially those lighter pinks, we picked up about two to three feet in these areas. Tell you ride, you're one of them around Lake City as well. Again, we're talking about the higher elevations, lower elevations. We're dealing with that uh, rain and also some thunderstorms really developing, and that's going to be the scenario for today. Our across this area too. As we go through your tomorrow, we could see addition of maybe about five to eight inches again around Telluride. Uh, in terms of snow peak activity, uh, snowstorm, we should see around um, the upper Midwest. It really peaks in January. We'll see this around the Ohio Valley as well in January and even down off towards the south. Let's talk about some of those winter storm names because we start you out with Anya and we will end up with Zaire. We'll see if we get all the way through that as we continue in through the season. So why do we actually name winter storms. Well, the reason is, is to basically boost awareness and to encourage preparation for high impact events, but also it's a unified message. So if you have a name, you might even have uh, more storms at once. You know what's going on. Hashtag the name and that will get a unified message out there and then also too tracks easily. So again, if you have more uh, storms at once again, you can verify it with the name. Let's talk about December through February when we look at the CPC and this kind of brings in a La Nina pattern that we're going to be seeing moving over to it. As we look at the precipitation outlook, we can see more in the northern tier. That's where we'll see more of that rain and it is below average the further to the south we go and in terms of those temperatures, uh, we can see more of the same. So further off towards the north and west, it looks like possibly below average, likely above average as we look down off towards the south, up towards the mid-Atlantic, over towards uh, the northeast as well. Paul? So the NFL game day forecast for us, and we're going to start you out. Detroit, you are headed over towards uh, Minnesota, and this looks like a stellar game. Absolutely gorgeous. Temperatures in the 70s, lots of sunshine out there, so hopefully people can get out there and enjoy that. And then this is another one as Cincinnati heads over towards uh, Cleveland. Again, we're going to stay in Ohio with plenty of sunshine in the forecast. Those temperatures in the upper 60s and the 70s. Don't forget those sunglasses. You're definitely going to need them. We'll be right about those temperatures and how they continue to rebound as that cooler air continues to retreat off to the north. This area of high pressure is going to continue to expand. So this is why as we go into uh, this week, we are going to continue to warm things up over the next seven days, though. Unfortunately, we're not going to be dealing with any type of rain. Fortunately, unfortunately, some areas need it. Some areas do not need that rain. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening today. 193 million people above average by the time we hit Tuesday, 250 million people will be above average. So we'll just continue to see this footprint just expand as we go through the next several days here. Temperatures right now in Chicago, they feel so good. 44 in Cincinnati, a little bit on the coolish side, but again, we will continue to warm up as we go throughout the day. Uh, we have these temperatures in the 70s, the 80s. Tomorrow it's going to be even warmer in spots. Look at the 
60s. Uh, 82 in Oklahoma City. We're seeing this around Alexandria as well. But we are talking about record heat as we head towards tomorrow. Bangor, Maine, we're forecasting 74. The record set back in 1936 was 72 degrees. So yes, that would really uh, break that record for sure. We'll be right back. Matthew Priebus, he joins us now. And uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, this morning to talk about this. So uh, you ended up adopting a, a little kitten from the rescue flight. So uh, how'd that happen? Wow, great question. Son, so what did your wife and son say about this? Yeah, so my wife, I did not. So did you already have pets at home? And if you did, how are they, you know, acting towards each other? Yeah, we have quite a few. Uh, the dog not adjusting, but how has you, how, how have you adjusted or your, and actually, actually the little kitty adjusted and your wife? Are you guys taken and everything's good there? Yeah. Come on, you're a sucker for these little animals. So <laughs> have you ever flown one of these flights before? And will you do it again knowing you might bring back mm. another family member? <laughs> So, yeah, this is not bulldogs here in Georgia like you do adopt and take away. But that's for sure. well, <laughs> Captain Matthew Trevich, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate everything that you do. And speaking of suckers for pets, yes, your dog me. is named Blaze. I um, rescued him from the, the wildfires in California. She was out there with her firefighter stuff. She's putting <laughs> fires out. Took the dog out. Yeah, I don't think it really went that way. <laughs> if you're Better looking story, for though. ways to help out, spooky season, we're Boop. all subject to. Come across some holiday decor. <laughs> Hello, pumpkin. <laughs> Including the iconic jack-o'-lantern. Well, let's take you to Canova, West Virginia. A larger-than-life tradition is bringing in pumpkins by the thousands. Take a look. All right, love this time of the year. It's just beautiful out there. We can look at that fall color. And if you are in the south, we're still waiting for that peak to happen from Dallas off towards Atlanta. But the further to the north you go, we're past pink and especially back off towards the west here, past peak. And we can see the latest around Great Falls, Yellowstone, back down off towards Denver, Salt Lake City, more of the same. And even as we go into late week, again, we want to see some of those uh, yellow colors. That's where it's going to be, where we still have uh, more time to get out there and see it. But still looking beautiful again up towards Burlington around Albany Scranton across the northeast here and then once again as we head off towards the south we still do have some time uh, to get out there and look at this around Nashville Montgomery over towards Raleigh and Charleston as well even down off towards Tallahassee and this goes into late week as well look what happens though as we look at Nashville so this is going to be a place to maybe that you might want to go and so when we talk about the fall colors which are so beautiful we need those warm sunny days and cool crisp above freezing nights we don't want to go below freezing that's when we have a problem and that's what's going to give you your best color display out there so we look at the temperature outlook for november and we can see the bulk of the activity above average meaning that we're going to be dealing with these temperatures that are going to be around chicago around new york down off towards atlanta but most of us there's just one this little pocket here from seattle uh, to bismarck where we will not be above average over to you paul october means color